From the beginning of the insurgency in the Northeast, the Nigerian Air Force has been involved in the quest to quell the menace in which acts of terrorism were the order of the day. As the battle to restore the Northeast to her peaceful state ensued, many in their thousands were displaced from their homes, giving rise to many camps for the internally displaced persons, popularly known as IDP camps, in the Northeast and across the nation. The intensity of the operations in the Northeast by the Nigerian military to flush out the Boko Haram terrorists and rescue the captured women, children and the aged from their claws led to an increase in the population of the IDPs in the various camps. The Nigerian Air Force beyond conducting surveillance and attack missions in the fight against the insurgency also has a responsibility to search and rescue ground troops in addition to recovering people in distress. The Nigerian Air Force also has specially trained special forces who fight alongside their counterparts in the other services on the ground, all in a bid to wipe out the evil and madness of terrorism in northern Nigeria, rescuing hostages in the process. Nevertheless, the Nigerian Air Force, under the leadership of Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, deemed it necessary to extend the role of the Air Force in the military campaign against insurgency and terrorism beyond the bombs and the bullets. The whole essence of institutions of government is to provide services. It's about ensuring that human beings are able to live their lives, live their dreams, um, you know, pursue their legitimate aspirations without any hindrance. You know, so those in position of authority, including the Air Force or anybody, uh, essentially we are there to ensure that the people understand that the Air Force is a Nigerian Air Force and they are Nigerians. And therefore, whatever it is that we need to do, not only to secure them and secure their environment, but to also ensure that we are able to support them uh, when they become IDPs. So the idea of going out for this stems out from uh, the perspective that there is need for us to provide and support the communities that have been affected by this insurgency. The second angle to it, which has relationship with the fight against insurgency, the kinetic dimension of dealing with this problem, is also born out of the fact that we are aware that in every counterinsurgency operation, the communities or members of the communities you fight are very critical to our success. And therefore, the only way we can uh, succeed in getting what we want from these communities, for them to really appreciate that the Air Force is there for them and, and that the military is functioning there for them, is to find a way of engaging them and develop some form of confidence in them that this military or this Air Force is their Air Force. And you cannot engage people if you are far away from them. With this realization, we, we know that we, need, we have to find a way of winning the hearts and minds of members of this community so that they can talk to us, so that they can understand why we are there. These are the reasons why we believe that while fighting dropping bombs and rockets on the bad guys, we must also open another angle to make sure that we deal nicely and show compassion and concern for the victims of insurgency. In that way, they will appreciate what we are doing, not only in the kinetic angle, but also they will understand why we are there, that we share a common destiny, that we share common ideas, and those ideas are those of ensuring that people can move around freely pursue their legitimate aspirations without any hindrance. Nobody should interfere with that God-given right. Since July 2015, the humanitarian outreach programs of the Nigerian Air Force, which includes free medical consultancies and treatments, free surgical interventions 
and airlifting of IDPs were necessary to the Nigerian Air Force Medical Center in Meduguri. Provision of free eyeglasses, nutritional programs, and distribution of relief materials was intensified in the IDP camps to bring succor to teeming internally displaced persons across the nation and in the Northeast in particular. The Nigerian Air Force has also reached out to communities that have medical centers but are in dead need of medical facilities and has provided search. One example is the Melkohi Clinic in Yola. Being mindful of the daily needs of IDPs beside medical treatment, the Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, instituted a quarterly voluntary donation of relief materials to the IDP camps. In this scheme, Nigerian Air Force personnel are encouraged to make a voluntary donation of money, clothing items and other relief materials which are then distributed to IDPs in the various camps. The initiative by the Chief of Air Staff to give back to IDPs in order to alleviate their suffering is a laudable move. So whenever we get the information that these things have been distributed to them, it gives me a lot of joy and excitement. I'm most delighted and grateful to give back to the society. In the IDP camp at Dallory, the Nigerian Air Force established a level 2 hospital and deployed qualified medical personnel to man the hospital 24 hours every day. The Dallary ITP camp has also witnessed a lot of support from the Nigerian Air Force in other areas beyond medical support to provision of borehole for portable water supply, distribution of relief materials, nutritional programs and provision of shelter. The Nigerian Air Force also established another level 2 hospital in the Bama IDP camp with medical personnel deployed to cater to the displaced. In addition, the Nigerian Air Force provided portable water system here and the feeding programs are also carried out here too. Furthermore, shelters are provided for the internally displaced persons to make their living standards better. The Nigerian Air Force hospitals in the conflict areas have also witnessed expansions and provision of new medical equipment with other supplies to cater for the health of pilots and military personnel on the battlefield. The service experience uh, a lot of uh, support from the Chief of Air Staff, in which we found ourselves that our medical facilities in various units have been upgraded. In fact, over that period now, as I'm talking to you, over 2,500 line items, what I'm saying, the ranging medical equipment, ranging from uh, as simple as uh, maybe instrument uh, like uh, forceps and what have you, to the level of CT scan have been acquired and distributed to the medical facilities. And then the number of the facilities have also increased. Following the expansions of its medical facilities, especially in the conflict areas, the stage became set for the Nigerian Air Force to periodically conduct medical outreach programs 
from one IDP camp to another, with several IDPs benefiting in the process. At the early stages, the IDP camps in places like Dalori, Bama and Banki, among others, had severely malnourished children, and the Nigerian Air Force therefore instituted a nutritional program that is contributing greatly to addressing the challenge. In the Nigerian Air Force nutritional program, about 1,000 school-going children from various IDP camps in the Northeast are fed daily. It is interesting to note that the nutritional program of the Nigerian Air Force has attracted the attention of some corporate organizations, some of who have contributed to the sustenance of the program through the donation of food items. Notable among these is Tolaram Africa Enterprise, which donated 4,000 cartons of Indomie noodles, worth over 10 million naira, for onward transfer to the internally displaced persons. The donated Indomie noodles were subsequently airlifted to the Northeast and used to supplement the now special diet program in the IDP camps, where many amazing recoveries of previous minority children had already been witnessed. People here, they are very happy because most people here have the problem of having this appendix, appendix all this equinal hernia, you see them, when they cough, they have all this um, uh, paraumbilical hernia, but they have never got any treatment to it. But now you people are here, thank God, you have started taking some of them to Meduguri for surgery, and you, are you have started seeing the people with eye problem, and even you have started operating the eyes in the other tent. We are very grateful. Alhamdulillah, Mungori Allah, Dama Wuna Rana Makejira. Muna Murna Wuna Abunda Sukhu Skosa Memo, Las Sukhu Sukhu Magana Yosunjo, Muzona Dasu, Sankamana Wuna Chemoko, Mungori, Muna Tamurna Wuna Abun, Kowara Kua, Sukhu Sukhu Murna Kawana Abun, Harry and Zamuna Kam Murna Muke. Usually, medicine is uh, something that is evidence based. Initially, when you visit a camp, you will see that people will receive you with some degree of skepticism. However, when they see a few people who have been treated, they go back to the, the, the community, they come, you see that in fact they are the ones that will be looking for you. So initially they they take us with little skepticism but over time people have heard what we've done in several places so subsequently we saw that whenever we visit camps you see that the reception is uh, very good. The Nigerian Air Force has been carrying out cancer screening and surgical intervention outreach in the conflict areas, where the medical personnel visit camps and communities and identify those with medical needs and based on the condition, a list is drawn for those who will be taken to the theater for surgery. But for urgent cases, patients are immediately evacuated to the location of theater and surgeries are conducted. Worthy to mention is the recent surgeries that were carried out in the Northeast with positive results and great relief to the patients. The Nigerian Air Force is very passionate about providing humanitarian intervention schemes um, to internally displaced persons all over the country and particularly in the northeastern part of the country for obvious reasons. Um, so much passionate that even when uh, specialized operations are planned, particular attention is paid towards taking care of the internally displaced persons. Uh, an immediate example would be that of uh, Operation Ruan Wuta, which was conducted by the Nigerian Air Force from the 7th to the 16th of September. It was an operation that was designed to rain significant fire on known Boko Haram terrorist locations. And in that respect, it was envisaged that there would be or there could be an increased number of internally displaced persons. So a special program was packaged. Uh, aside from the one for the IDPs generally, 
There was also a medical outreach program specifically for RAN. And at RAN, we had a total of 856 IDPs who got free medical treatment within the two-week period. Uh, then there were some that needed various uh, surgical interventions that were beyond the immediate environment. So the Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, directed that those ones in this category should be flown with uh, the Nigerian Air Force MI helicopters to Meduguri, where we have a better equipped uh, medical center. And indeed, they were flown using our helicopters. At the end of the day, uh, from, from RAN, as well as from other IDP camps uh, in Meduguri, as well as near Meduguri, within the two-week period, uh, we had a total of 90 general surgeries conducted. We also had 62 eye surgeries conducted. Uh, there were some who had various eye challenges but did not require surgeries. We had 60 in that category that were given free eyeglasses within that period. That was during Operation Ruan uh, Of course, there has been a follow-up operation to Operation Ruan which is codenamed Operation Ruan Wuta 2. It's currently ongoing. And again, uh, special attention was given to Monguno. At Monguno, we've had, within the first week of the operation, a total of 677, I believe, 677 IDPs who have received free treatment. We've also had um, free surgical intervention ongoing to the extent that, as at date, we've had a total of 76 eye surgeries. Uh, we've also had about 33 uh, general surgeries. And um, the program is still ongoing and should last um, for another few days, five, six days. And so we expect that the figure will increase. So at the end of the day, the Nigerian Air Force remains passionate about the people. It's important because when you actually come in contact with these IDPs, you will know that many of them do not even know the concept of Nigeria. They do not even know the concept of Nigerian Air Force. So these programs have, in a way, endeared the Nigerian Air Force to them, and some of them already have a sense of belonging, and they are very much willing to further cooperate with the Nigerian Air Force. The statistics on Nigerian Air Force medical outreach in the Northeast and F City is as follows: Abuja IDP Camp. Yola IDP Camp Meduguri IDP Camp Bauchi Villages Special Surgeries in Meduguri and Bauchi Meikohi IDP Camp Yola Treatments in Nigerian Air Force Medical Emergency Hospital, Delory. Treatments in Nigerian Air Force Medical Emergency Hospital in Bama. Medical outreach at Goza. Medical outreach at Zamani Community in Abuja. Medical outreach in Bochi Community. Medical outreach at Government Secondary School in Beni Sheikh's IDP Camp. Medical outreach at Maynock Primary School IDP Camp, Meduguri. Medical outreach at Jakana Primary School IDP Camp, Meduguri. Medical outreach at Banki IDP Camp, Meduguri. Special surgeries in Dalori, Bama and Banki IDP Camps. Special surgeries in RAN and five IDP camps around Meduguri. Medical outreach at RAN IDP camp.
Indeed, the humanitarian intervention schemes of the Nigerian Air Force have not been limited to the conflict zones in the Northeast alone. In the past two years, the Nigerian Air Force has conducted medical outreach programs and other humanitarian schemes in other parts of the country, namely Lagos in the Southwest region. Oweri in the Southeast region. Bakasi Cross River State in the South South region. Makoti in Benue State. Kanji in Niger State. And in Kirang in Plateau State all in the north central region between july 15 2015 to 2nd of november 2017 a total of 239,349 patients have been seen and treated of virus ailments we are doing that to create in the minds of nigerians the sense of ownership of the nigerian air force that's why the Air Force is called Nigerian Air Force. We are there to support Nigerians, whether you are in the Northeast, uh, whether you are in the Southwest, just like we mobilize our fighter aircraft and helicopter gunships to make sure we check insecurity in any zone of the country. We will also mobilize our human and material resources to provide some form of support, uh, such as medical services, to uh, victims of these uh, you know, internal security challenges. So that is why we are everywhere. Plans are at the highest level to make the Northwest feel the pause of the Nigerian Air Force. The Northwest is one area that we are now planning. We are going to commission our quick response base in Gusau, God willing, on the 5th of November and immediately with that, I believe that we should put together a humanitarian program that will tell the communities that we are here to secure you and we are also there to provide some form of services to you. And I want to sincerely uh, appreciate the federal government for supporting us to continue to conduct not only the kinetic side of it, but to make sure that all the strategies that we are putting together to ensure that Boko Haram is defeated, we are funded. The several medical outreach programs, in addition to other humanitarian intervention schemes of the Nigerian Air Force, is seen as a corporate social responsibility to its host communities. This initiative of the Nigerian Air Force leadership is geared towards winning the hearts and minds of the people and also further cementing good military and civilian relations. This concept has yielded positive results over the past two years. We have indeed realized the objective. And you, you are now seeing a more friendly community, a, a community that is more willing to interact with us, to talk to us, because they are now seeing that, look, these guys are here to save us. We sometimes give them a ride on our helicopters, especially the sick ones from different communities to, to our hospital in Maiduguri. And that bond is there now. They are now beginning to say, look, these guys are not really harmful. They are there to save our lives. They are there to make sure that we live our dreams. And that bond is making us to really share ideas on how are we going to deal with issues of suicide bombing, for instance. There is no aircraft that can support a suicide bomber, a 13-year-old girl carrying explosive. It's very difficult for us to do that. In fact, we don't have the access to do that. But through this bond that we have established with these communities, we are able to get information. And from that perspective, that is enabling us not only at the strategic and operational level, but even at the tactical level to really understand the psyche of these people and to see how we can put together strategies that we will, not only the kinetic side of it, but put strategies that will help us to really uh, deal with the situation. So I think it has been uh, a, a very useful tool uh, for us in the Air Force uh, as far as dealing with the insurgency is concerned. The Nigerian Air Force continues to roll out one humanitarian intervention scheme or the other towards alleviating the sufferings 
of the internally displaced persons in Nigeria. There is no doubt that the accomplishments of the Nigerian Air Force, particularly in the last two years or thereabout, have simply gone beyond the bombs and the bullets, which it has been so effectively deploying in the fight against terrorism in the land. One thing is clear though, the people-centered character of the present Federal Government Administration has created an enabling environment for the Nigerian Air Force to consider the people as being critical to resolving the nation's security challenges. The Nigerian Air Force, beyond the bombs and the bullets,